Hello and welcome back. This is Arun Patwardhan and today I will be talking about the different ways available to automate scripts. There are several different options available. We will look at two, expect utility and launch daemons, launch agents. But before that, let us look at why we would need to automate. This is a good question. Why automate? Most of the times we or someone else will be running the desired script. However, there is one major drawback with this. It assumes that there is someone who can run the script and that they have access to the computer where the script is supposed to run. This is not always a given. The above approach also has the problem of efficiency. If the script is to be run periodically or at re regular intervals, it can get very inefficient and is likely to affect the workflows of the organization. Automation solves these problems for us by allowing scripts to run by themselves. There is no need for human interaction. Let us see some of the ways we could achieve this. Now, one of the big challenges with automating scripts is the fact that some of the commands and executables that we will use in our script require a response from the user when they are being executed. Now, this is easy if a human is running the script. They can simply respond to the question. However, if the script is scheduled to run automatically, then it's a problem. The expect utility helps solve this issue. It's a tool that allows us to send a response back via a script. No need for human interaction. Another advantage of this is the fact that we can now ensure that there is a consistent response to those questions. Let us have a look at how it is implemented. The script on the left is a short snippet of code that asks a question. Anyone running the script is expected to respond. The script on the right is another script that will trigger the left hand side script and automatically respond to the question. Let us look at an example to see it better and look at how it works in action. Spec utility in action, it would be really great if you could first look at a script that asks questions. So here we have a script that asks a few questions and we will then write another script that will answer those for us automatically. So there are a series of questions being asked via an echo statement uh, with a read command waiting for an input from the user. And we also have a question that may appear as a choice or in a random manner and we'll see how we could potentially deal with that situation also. So we're just generating a random number and based on whether it's an odd or an even number, we ask question A or question B and then wait for a response from the user. So this is our question script. Now we will write a script where we will answer these questions. So first up, I have my shell interpreter, which I'm specifying. Similarly, I will also specify the path to the expect utility. Next, I will list out some variables we will need to answer our questions. So we've got some variables which we are declaring and we'll export them so that we can use them within the expect utility. Now, 
the answers that we wish to give, we will in fact be writing it in the form of a script, which we will send to the expect utility using the year document, which we saw in an earlier blog. Expect EOF. We are putting the EOF in quotes because we are using variables inside. So internally we'll have our own variables. Where we'll say from the environment pick those values. So we can access ANS1, ANS2 because we've exported them earlier. And similarly, onboard. Now, in order to answer the questions, we need to spawn the script that asks the questions. So we will kick start it using the spawn command, followed by the path to the script. And then we tell our script what we are expecting as a question and what we would like to give as an answer. So we will say expect and we will literally be mentioning these questions out here. Expect what is your name? And then you can send the answer that you want for a slash r for a return and the answer itself could be stored in a variable and that's how we will answer the remaining questions so we will have there were four questions I will just copy paste them out here and we will send different values back. So I'm copying question from the question script or you could just type it out if you wanted to. Of course, make sure you type out the expectation correctly, otherwise it's not going to work. You don't have to always send values through a variable. You can directly hard code the values in there also. Uh, do not forget the slash r for the return. And it's that simple. As long as you know the questions and the possible values, it's easy for you to write it down. For the option, we can put our questions in brackets. Do you like option A? If that's the case, send course would you prefer option B definitely so that's how you could deal with questions that have an option or you may get a different question every time. Finally, we can tell expect to receive an EOF 
and we put an E O F ourselves. So what did we do? We declared variables to hold our values. We exported them. We used a here document to send a set of instructions to the expert utility where we set local variables for our local script in here using the exported variables as a source of value. We spawned the script that asks questions and then we were expecting the question and sending our desired response for each of those questions. So let's try it out. I would say ZSH answers and there you go question comes in and the answer came in from the expect utility question came in the answer from the expect utility and in this case you can see it was asking for option A the next time I run it it gave me option B so my script is still able to handle both the situations. And this makes it really useful. This is how you would use the expect utility to deal with scripts that aren't ask scripts, tools, executables that ask questions and would need an answer. One of the most common requirements when it comes to automation is to schedule tasks to run on their own at regular intervals. This is achieved using a powerful macOS tool called Launch Agents and Launch Demons. They are both processes that typically run in the background and we use them to schedule tasks. This is quite similar to a cron job which is used in Linux and Unix systems. Both launch agents and launch daemons are almost exactly the same, barring a few differences. For one, launch agents are always owned by the user that logs in. What this also means is that launch agents always only start after the user has logged in. Launch daemons, on the other hand, are owned by the system and can start at any point in time irrespective of whether the user is logged in or not. Another difference is the fact that launch daemons are always system-wide, whereas launch agents can be either system-wide or applicable to a specific user account only. Now these differences are important. They will help you decide whether your solution needs to be implemented as a launch daemon or as a launch agent. So how do we create those? Let's have a look. Creating a daemon is very easy. First, we start off by creating the plist file that contains the information about the daemon. It's typically in the bundle id dot daemon label dot plist name format. Then we prepare the item that will be run by the daemon, which we will refer to as the payload. This could be a script, it could be an application, or it could be just a simple command that needs to be executed. Next, we will place the payload in the appropriate folder, provided appropriate permissions and ownership. Then we will place our daemon in the root library launch daemons folder, which is where all third party daemons are to be placed. We will pro provide appropriate permissions and ownership to the daemon playlist file. And then we could load the daemon manually or just simply restart the system which will load the daemon for us. Creating agents is very similar to creating daemons. Here too we create a playlist that contains the information about the agent. We prepare the payload place the payload in the correct folder, provided appropriate permissions and ownership, place the agent 
in either the root library launch agents folder or the user's home folder library launch agents folder. The root li library launch agents folder is appropriate if you want the agent to be available system-wide. But if you want it for a specific user, then you would go to the home folder for that user and place it within the library launch agents folder located inside the home folder. Then we will provide appropriate permissions and ownership to the agent. And finally load the agent manually or simply log out and log back in as a user. Let us have a look with an example. Let's have a look at how to create a launch agent. I'm going to show a launch agent but the steps as we've seen earlier are almost the same for launch daemons. To start off, let me give you the scenario. Basically, I want a script to run every 30 seconds and it will show a pop-up along with a notification to the user. Now, the script itself is not doing anything useful, but the idea is to focus more on how we create and prepare the launch agent. So let's have a look at the script first, which is going to be our payload. It's a simple script that uses the OSA script command to run some Apple script commands. And in fact, here too, we are using a here document to send multiple commands to our OSA script command. And this will just display a notification and an alert to the user. So that's our payload. Now, how do we create the playlist for the agent? Well, there are different ways and different tools available for that. I will actually use a command line tool which is very easy and pretty simple, which is the defaults command. So I will say defaults, write, I provide the path to my playlist. Generally, it's in the reverse bundle ID format. Path to the playlist along with the key and its value. So in this case, the value is a string. And the key that we're storing is a label that gives the name to our agent. And generally, it's a good idea to keep the name of the agent the same as the name of the file itself, though that is not required. The dot playlist extension is not required. There you go, there's our playlist waiting in here. So we will give similar commands to specify that we would like to run at, for example, load. That is a run as soon as the agent is loaded. So the key is run at load. And it's a yes or no question. So we give a Boolean value of true. Similarly, we specify the frequency so the start interval is an integer value of 30 and finally we specify the payload which are our program arguments so we are giving multiple instructions we are telling the interpreter to use and the path to the script which we are going to run so we're going to tell the agent that using the ZSH interpreter, run this particular script. So there are two items we have to give. That is why we are adding as an array. So we specify the interpreter. And we will be placing our script in the library scripts folder. So run it from there. And there you go. Using these commands, I've created my playlist. I'll just show it to you in a moment. But another key point to note is the order in which you run these commands doesn't matter. So you don't need to worry if you ran uh, 
the run at load command before the label or afterwards. It doesn't affect the plist in any way. So I'm going to open the plist. I'll first show you with Xcode in case you're wondering how it looks with Xcode. One of the nice things about Xcode is the fact that it actually prints it out in a table format, which can be a little confusing because we are also accustomed to seeing it in the XML format, uh, in which case you could open it using any other tool. I will, for example, use Code Runner. And you may see this problem where it's not appearing well in another tool. You could even use text edit if you wanted. In which case you may just want to clean up the PLS. Okay. Of course we had the PLS to open in our XML, so Xcode, so we'll close it there. And this time when we open it, uh, it's easy to read. So we just converted the format in which the PLUtil or the plist was written using the plutil convert command. And that just makes it human readable. It doesn't affect the script in any way. So there you go. There's the label of our agent. This is the action that the agent will be performing. Uh, it will run as soon as it loads with a frequency of 30 seconds. Now we need to place our script and our agent in the correct place. So I want this agent to be available to all users. So it's going to be system wide. I will first copy the welcome script to the library scripts folder. You would need to use sudo for that. I would change the ownership to root wheel I'll leave the permissions as is, it's okay. Similarly, I would copy my agent to the root library launch agents folder. And I would also change the ownership there. Again, whether you need to change the ownership also depends on certain situations, but it's not always required. Now, there are a couple of ways in which we could get this agent started. Finally, but man, launch CTL. Oh, spelling mistake. Launch CTL. All right. And we will use the bootstrap command to bootstrap it in. So for that, we would run id u to get the UID of the current user, which is 501. And then I would say launch CTL bootstrap into the GUI for user 501 the library launch agents path to the playlist I made a mistake in the previous command bootstrap it's very easy to miss this and there you go it actually loaded it immediately of course, the other option would have been for me to simply just log out and log back in and it would have done the same thing. And there you go, you can see the pop-up coming in.
and you can see the notification appearing and in 30 seconds I should see another pop-up coming up. So we will wait for 30 seconds. In the meantime, we can use the launch CTL list command to list out all the agents that are running. And you can see there are so many agents in here. And there you go, it's run again, it's run the script again. There's the name of my agent. Of course, we can use the pipe redirection or for the output and search using grep for anything that matches this and it will only show you your agent so you can easily filter it out. And there you go, that's how you could easily create a launch agent or a launch daemon. As we can see, there are several tools available. If used carefully, they can make things very easy for the support team. Of course, with these sort of approaches, things need to be thoroughly tested to ensure nothing goes wrong. Once you are com comfortable with this, you can come up with more complex solutions and be more imaginative with your approach. And that's how you could automate scripts in macOS. Thank you.